Well, let's get familiar with the layout of the application. Up at the top are the pull-down menus with all the different functions for iDesigner Pro. Pull-down menu options are generally grouped by functions. For instance, functions such as undo, redo, cut, and paste are used when editing a design. Thus, these functions are located under the Edit Pull-Down Menu group. All the functions and options for cutting are under the Cut Pull-Down Menu group. Now, as a tip, when trying to find a certain function, try to imagine what it would be grouped under. To save time, notice that some menu items will have a shortcut key for that function on the right. These are there to help you get to the common functions that you may use all the time and that you can get to them quickly. For instance, if you are new to the software, you'll probably undo your steps by clicking Edit and then Undo. You'll notice, though, that you can undo the steps just by pressing Alt and then Backspace or pressing Control Z. Now, it's a good habit to get to know the shortcut keys as soon as you can to speed up your design process. Next are the toolbars. These are the bars along the top and the side of the window. A toolbar is a bar that has a group of tools or functions that look like buttons. These toolbars were designed to give you quick access to commonly used tools and functions. When iDesigner Pro is started for the first time, it will give you access to four different toolbars. The System Toolbar, the Workspace Toolbar, the Operation Toolbar, and the Tools. The System Toolbar has functions that have everything to do with the system. It has similar buttons that are found in other common window applications. Functions such as New, Open, Save, Import, Export, Undo, Redo, and Exit. By the way, you'll notice that the mouse point hovers over a button. A little label will pop out describing the button in case you forget what that certain button does. The workspace toolbar has functions that pertain to anything with the workspace, which is this large area down here. The workspace is where we work on a design. The workspace functions help us to adjust the workspace so that we have an easier time working with our design. For instance, the grid lines that you see may be too busy for you and therefore may be too distracting, so they can be turned off. We can also turn off shape fills or line styles. The operation toolbar has functions to, or tools commonly used for manipulating your objects of your design, such as moving, resizing, rotating, slanting, and mirroring, or flipping. The toolbar on the left is considered the main toolbar and has different tools and functions that are commonly used for designing. Tools such as the text tool for creating lettering, shapes tools for making shapes, the graphic edit tools for drawing lines and arcs and curves, and of course the scanning and vectorizing tools. It contains other functions such as the select tool, which will be your main tool, the zoom tools, and the stroke and fill tools as well. Each toolbar can float. In other words, it can be dragged to the center and moved around. Once the toolbar is floating, it then can be resized as well to give us more room to work just by clicking on it. Floating a toolbar is a great way of working on a design where certain tools are going to be used repeatedly. A certain toolbar can then be floated next to the area we are working for quick access to those tools. Once you are done using the floating toolbar, it can then be parked either by double clicking on it or dragging it to the side area. When dragging the toolbar back to its parked position, you'll notice that it will change shape indicating that it is ready to be parked. Now, if we look closely at some of the tools in the toolbar, some have a little arrow next to the tool icon. What this means is that this button has a whole set of tools attached to it. They're also called flyout toolbars. To show how this works, once a tool with an arrow is clicked on, then an added or extended toolbar will fly out, so to speak. For instance, once the shape tools is clicked, a fly toolbar of the different shapes will appear. Once they appear, they can then float as well. If you find that you're using them quite a bit, they too can be parked by dragging them to the side of the iDesigner Pro window or double-clicking on the toolbar.
Toolbars can be turned on or off as needed. This is done by clicking on the View pull-down menu and select Toolbars. Here, each toolbar can be turned off or on by clicking on the list of toolbar. A check mark next to the toolbar indicates that it is currently displaying. While we're in this menu, notice that further on down is an option where the toolbars can be customized. This will be covered in the Tips and Tricks segment, but if we click on Customize, this window appears. Now you'll notice the checkbox at the bottom of the window. This will change the size of the tools on each toolbar. This is great if you have issues seeing the tools on the toolbar. For our training session, this will be checked so that the tools can be easier to see. Now we just click Close. If you notice at the top, above the toolbars, but below the pull-down menu, is this bar. This is the Smart Bar. What the Smart Bar does is it displays all the parameters, values, and settings for a selected shape, tool, or function. This means that it continually changes depending on the current operation. Now as we go along, it will become apparent as to the usefulness of this bar, but to briefly demonstrate, if we click on the circle tool, the smart bar immediately displays all the settings for creating a circle, such as the exact X and Y position, as well as the radius or the size of the circle. As you can see, the smart bar is particularly good if you need more accurate settings to adjust the shape, rather than adjusting the shape visually. When selecting an object by using the selector tool, this arrow tool here, the object's general information such as size and position will display in the smart bar. As discussed previously, this is the workspace where the designs are created. The dark black border is called the sign blank. Now this can be set up to represent the area in which your designs need to fit into. As an example, let's say you have a sign board to, to place cut lettering. The sign blank can be set to the dimension of the sign board. This will give you a visual representation of the letter size relative to the sign board as well as the limitations of the sign board. If you don't have need for this type of representation, the sign blank can be turned off by clicking on the sign blank button on the workspace toolbar that we discussed earlier. On the top and left of the workspace are the rulers. Rulers can help us visually see the dimensions of each shape. At times we may find it hard to judge the size by using the rulers, but by right-clicking on the ruler, this will place what is called a guideline that we can then position. For vertical guidelines, we can click on the top ruler bar. If we need horizontal guidelines, we can click on the side ruler bar. Each guideline can be adjusted by clicking and dragging it to a position. What is really helpful, though, is that each guideline has a label of its position or angle. We'll be discussing the guidelines later in the segment Advanced Tools and Features. The rulers can be changed. If we click on the ruler, it will give us a choice of the type of measurement unit, whether inches or millimeters, where we want to position the rulers, and if we want to hide the rulers. The gray lines that you see is the grid. On the workspace toolbar, this button here will turn on the grid as well as turn it off. The button next to it will turn on the snap to grid. This will ensure that any time we click on the workspace to manipulate or create an object, the points are automatically snapped to the nearest grid point. This function can be a great feature to better align shapes or drawing shapes such as drawing lines and circles. To demonstrate this, when the snap to grid is enabled, as we draw a square, the first and second points are snapped to grid points. By clicking on the options pull down menu and then selecting grid, we can change the line grid pattern to a dot pattern by clicking on this check mark. The workspace will now display a dot pattern, each dot located where the grid lines intersect. If the grids are too distracting for us to work with, as mentioned earlier, they can be turned off by clicking on the grid button on the workspace toolbar. There are times we may find that we need to see a shape that is behind other objects. A 
A good example of this is this circle here. It is supposed to have text in the middle of it, but because both objects are the same color, it's hard to see. Well, by clicking on the Fill tool in the Workspace toolbar, it turns off the fill, thereby allowing us to see the text behind the circle. The Show Line Style button here will display the line of the objects and their type. Both the Show Line Style and the Show Fill are there to simplify the workspace so that the shapes and objects are easier to see and our design is easier to work with. Down below the workspace is the color palette. Here is where you can change the color of the shapes in your drawing or design. The way this works is when a shape is selected, any color in this palette can be selected. Just click it and it changes the color of the selected shape or shapes to that color. On the right side is this color view palette. This palette displays the colors that have been used in the design. In this drawing we have six objects with different colors and these colors are displayed over here. The benefit of this is keeping the colors in your design consistent. We don't have to guess which color on the main color palette that we use. Next, there is a setting that we should set before you start designing. The worst thing that can happen, and it does, is to lose a design in which you have invested time to create due to system failure, due to possibly computer crash or other failures. Therefore, it's a good habit to save your files frequently. But it happens. We get too involved with the design and we forget to save. In iDesigner Pro, there is a way of saving our designs automatically. It is the automatic save feature. Now this is found in the options pull down menu. Once selected, this little window appears. Selecting the first option will automatically save your designs on a regular basis and in the background so that you never see it happen. So you're not having to wait for it to save before you can continue on with your design. Then, when a system fails, you know that you are safe from losing all your good hard work. When automatic load is selected, it will restore the design up to the last automatic save, which here is done every five minutes. Both of these choices should be checked and turned on. You may also extend or reduce the time between the saves to suit your preference. The last selection, Create Backup When Saving, We'll make a backup file every time you save the design. This is a nice feature and it's essential in case the original file ever gets corrupted or becomes unusable for any reason. For more information on any of the supplies and equipment that you've seen in today's video, please contact one of our bestblanks.com sales professionals at 1-888-431-7385.